Within the last two weeks, we saw certain significant events that uh, really shaped the political landscape here in Sri Lanka. Uh, let's get down to uh, the show. Welcome to Vantage Point. And here in conversation with me, as usual, we have Dr. Diane Jai Tilaka, um, a former diplomat and also a political analyst. Doctor, we have a lot to talk about, so I just want to go straight into it. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, these days, what's being talked about most is the United Nations um, Human Rights Council and yeah. also the United Nations General Assembly. Yeah. We saw Sri Lanka in the international spotlight. We see like a tug of war between the international community and we have Sri Lanka pulling from the other side. Let's talk about Navi Pillai. Let's start with the UNHRC because I think that's more pertinent to us and which would really affect us. Yeah. She was in the island in August and there was a lot of talk about this report that she was going to submit on Sri Lanka. And she did that on the 25th of September, incidentally the same day on which the President delivered his address at the UN uh, General Assembly. Now when we saw this report that was the oral submissions of uh, Ms. Pille which was delivered by the Deputy High Commissioner, not by herself, uh, we saw certain elements that were included in the report, but mostly the report was calling for Sri Lanka to provide a credible investigation and saying that Sri Lanka has fallen short of that credible investigation. What have you got to say about the tone of this report? Well, I, I see the report as a kind of a two-layer cake. Uh, the bottom layer was uh, a survey, a critical survey of the human rights and governance situation in Sri Lanka as a whole. I wouldn't call it uh, bitterly critical, but on balance it was critical. It wasn't wholly negative. Uh, Sri Lanka was praised for holding the northern provincial election, for instance. Uh, I, I see those general observations as, well, fair enough. Fair enough. I mean, a spotlight needs to be focused on Sri Lanka. That's Navi Pillai's job, to focus it on every country, to do an audit report, basically. Mm -hmm. And she did the audit. Um, if we have anything to say, we should uh, refute it with facts and argumentation. But broadly speaking, I didn't find anything particularly unfair or hostile or wildly imbalanced did you find about something most new? Of what Did you said. find something new um, when compared to the other reports, the UNHRC reports uh, that were, you know, issued uh, regarding Sri Lanka? Did you see anything new in this report? Well, I saw something new in High Commissioner Pillay's uh, statement because when we started down this road in 2000 and, uh, 2009, 2009, yeah. In 2009, uh, on the 26th of May, when she addressed the UN Human Rights Council, and she's reminded of this by Professor G.L. Pires and the government uh, often, even, even when she came here, um, she was very strident about the need for an international inquiry mechanism into allegations of war crimes. This was uh, just a week after the war had ended. And of course, well, you know, it's known we managed to hold the line there and, and uh, sort of push it back. But now, she's uh, a little more reasonable. She says, look, you've got till March 2014, and in March 2014, the international community will feel duty-bound to call for such an inquiry unless you have a credible domestic process to show. So in that sense, it may not be entirely sincere, but she has uh, kept a door half open. She's saying, look, you've got, she's no longer as dogmatic as she was in 2009 May. She's uh, willing to give Sri Lanka uh, a chance, if not the benefit of the doubt, and say, look, Clean up your act. You can do it. You, you've got six months, and after that, look. You know it's going to be. Uh, it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So it's not a threat, though it's seen as a threat by 
uh, Sri Lankan official. Then. Because it's more one. Yes, and I mean the tug of war from the Sri Lankan aspect is as soon as the report was read out by the Deputy uh, High Commissioner, um, the Sri Lankan contingent said, look, yes, she does not have an, uh, any right or a mandate to call for an international investigation or call for the in international community to say, you know, we're giving you this deadline and then we are going to start our own um, investigations. Well, well that's, uh, firstly, that's a matter of interpretation. She's done this before. The council has done this before. It's not the first time. I've been there when, when they decided on, a, on an international inquiry on, on Gaza. And there have been other inquiries since, on Libya, on Syria. So it's been done. Now, it's really not very smart to confront a UN High Commissioner uh, on the issue of exceeding a mandate uh, and saying that she doesn't have the power to do this, that and the other unless you can have a group of states and a broad group of states which back you. Now there were times that we took on the High Commissioner uh, when I served there, but it was never as one country. It was either the Asian group or you know, one of the, uh, as a grouping and as a grouping we would say look uh, the High Commissioner has to be more responsible to the Council. Uh, so, you, you don't really go head-on at uh, the High Commissioner, especially somebody who has the uh, the profile of Navi Pillay. She's respected. She's respected. So, you don't do that unless you have a, a posse with you. You don't do it alone because then you, uh, as, the, as the Americans say, what if you run it up the flagpole and nobody salutes. It looks like we ran it up the flagpole uh, about Navi in exceeding a mandate and uh, hardly anybody saluted. So are we saying that we need to really, as a country, not stand up to the UNHRC? Is that what you're saying? No, 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 no. You must be able to stand up to, the, to, to anybody and prevail. I mean, we showed how it could be done in May 2009. Uh, but that entails being able to convince others that you are in the right or to give you the benefit of the doubt. So you must never go it alone. You must build or mend your fences, uh, build coalitions, alliances, and then, and only then, can you defend your sovereignty. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult to do it alone. So does oh, only with a handful, you know. So, in this context, you're saying that we need to have strong alliances if we are going to really, you know, stand up and make our voices heard and make us take, you know, take us seriously. At the UNHRC, you are saying that we need to have strong alliances, which means we don't really have the strong alliances that our government thinks it has. It's even more basic, Mahina. We have to be able to convince. We have to be credible. You have to be able to win people over. It's like an election. It is an election, finally. It's to do with votes. You have to be able to win people over. Now, we are losing the people who were with us. We're losing the states that were with us. Uh, and that's a very vulnerable situation to be in. Especially when the sword of Democles is dangling over your head and it may be lowered in six months or not long thereafter. Mm -hmm. Now, when Navi Pillay was here in the island, um, she visited the north, she also held discussions with uh, the ministers in the government and also with uh, the Sri Lankan community here. Now, there was also a lot of um, controversy surrounding a certain statement that she had made and um, that was to do with the um, flag um, at the Independence Square and also which, after that boiled down to the statue of... Uh, uh, Mr. D.S. and Anaika. And uh, do you think that sort of had an impact on this report or the tone of the report? <laughs> Can we say that? Uh, it was the Buddhist flag mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the statue of uh, the late uh, our founding Prime Minister D.S. and Anaika. Uh, a very, very senior government official went on the record to a Sunday Singhalese newspaper and said, Who is she? to ask that D.S. Serenaika's statue be removed. Now, when one says that kind of thing about uh, a top UN official, 
uh, who is going to make a presentation on your country, you must be able to back it up with a tape or transcript, i.e. with fact. What happened to us? Before the verbal report was presented, all of this in the run-up, after she came and made, had the press conference, she went back. Uh, you know, you, what you don't do is, you invite somebody, uh, she's here, she spends a week, she says some things that are critical, some things that are critical of the Tigers, uh, you meet her, and then after she's gone a week later, you jeer, you know, or what they say in Sri Lanka, you hoot. Once her, once her back is turned, now that's that's not the way to do things. Navi Pillai's office responded very sharply. Firstly, it said that it issued a contradiction to all the relevant government authorities and it was ignored. The government did not correct or amend its accusation. That's one. Then it clarified. It said, yes, High Commissioner Navi Pillai did ask why in a country in which there are four major world religions represented, though unevenly of course demographically, but in which there are four religions, why is the flag of only one of those on display on that day perhaps at Independence Square? Shouldn't it have been the flags of all the major religions in the country or no religious flag at all? That was one question. Worse still is what they said about the statue of the late D.S. Saranayaka. Uh, her office said, look, she never said this. Not only did she say this, she didn't even think it. I mean, she, was, she wasn't thinking of D.S. Saranayaka at all. D.S. Saranayaka didn't come into the conversation. In other words, they rather politely accused the government of Sri Lanka uh, or the officials concerned of lying. Now, you don't get the best out of the visit if you accuse the High Commissioner for Human Rights falsely. I mean, she's human, right? It affects her mood and it affects her sense of status as the High Commissioner if somebody lies about you. Uh, and, and she has said uh, about some, uh, some remarks by the ministers that she has visited 60 countries and never has she been treated in this manner. And she says it's not the people, it's not the officials, it's, it's, it's these, these three ministers. So, uh, I don't think she's ever been lied about that blatantly. And certainly not before she is about to present a report on your country, on our country. Mm -hmm. So, I think the atmosphere was vitiated by that kind of postscript to her visit and uh, prelude to her oral presentation. Well, now she did give us an ultimatum as in the as in March next year. What should Sri Lanka do um, by that time between now and then? Let's talk about that after this short commercial break.